Hey all you super players out there, Ben Lodice aka 5 Buck Lunch. Today Bandai dropped the rest of the 2020 anniversary box cards. Pretty interesting, we got basically a whole new deck here in terms of like a full pure agent deck, as well as a lot of other interesting support for older decks. So first off we have Babidi, Leader of the Agents of Destruction. This has treat agent destruction cards in hand as if they had no specific costs. Auto when this card attacks, add one card from your life to your hand, then look at top five, add one agent destruction from your deck to your hand. When your life is four or less, draw one oh, and then untap one. And on the back side, we have a Majin Buu. It has once per turn, choose one agent of destruction card with an energy cost of two or less in your hand and play it. And that's relevant because we have a uh, old Bobbity card, one drop, that reduces agent of destruction cost cards in your hand by one. So you're going to be able to play any of the three or less agents. And then it has once per turn, pay three, choose one unison card with agent destruction in its hand and play it for, with three markers on it. And the reason that's relevant is because we have Vegito Resolute Agent of Destruction, which not only is just a really good green unison, but also you can play it for three instead of four if you play the uh, Agent of Destruction leader. It has double strike critical 20k, auto choose one card and discard it. When this card is played, choose all of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier and KO them. Which is obviously very good, so you can play it for three and still use that ability. Plus one gets 5k power for the turn. Minus five if your leader card is the evil wizard card, or all of your energy is mono green. Choose three cards in your opponent's hand and discard them. So this card is just really good in general. It's double strike critical, 25k, that clears your opponent's board. So like, even not in the agent deck, playing this for four is also really good. So uh, yeah, not that green needed more good unisons. I guess the fact that they have kind of an overwhelm of uh, good unisons, since you can only have one and play at a time, is kind of a negative. But like this card is really good. Um, it also allows you to play it if you're not playing uh, all the same color energy. That's the other reason that, that Majin Buu has its effect. One thing I do want to point out quick though, with this leader, is that on this side, it doesn't have a way to actually draw cards once you awaken. So that's kind of a negative to the deck. Uh, or a positive if you don't want to draw the secret rare, <laughs> I suppose. Alright, so next we're going to look at all of the new agents that we got. So to start off, we have Turtleist, Chaotic Agent of Destruction. It's a two-drop barrier unique. When this card attacks, look at the top five cards of your deck, add one card with any destruction from among them to your hand. So this is going to be a one-drop half the time because you have the uh, the one-drop um, Babidi. There we go. So it's basically a one-drop barrier 15k that when it attacks, you get to search top five. So pretty good. Uh, Broly, Invincible Agent of Destruction, 3-drop, active main 1, discard this card from your hand, add 1 Agent of Destruction card from your drop area to your hand, so it helps you cycle whichever agent you actually want. When this card is played, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, if you cost 5 or less, KO it, look at the top 3 cards of your deck, add 1 card among them to your hand, and place the remaining in your drop area. It's important that it says to the drop area because you want to be able to fuel the old secret rare. Lord Slug, Mighty Agent of Destruction, so this is their super combo, it's also unique. If you put it on the board, it has auto. When your opponent activates a counterplay skill, they choose two cards in their hand and they discard them. So it's interesting that we have a super combo that we can play that also protects us from counterplays, which is relevant because a lot of times we're using like big effects to put a bunch of agents in play. Uh, Android 13, Exterminating Agent of Destruction. Two drop counterplay if your leader card has agent in its card name. The battle card being played has an energy cost of three or less. This place is owner's dropper instead of being played. Play this card, then your opponent chooses one card in their hand and discards it. This is really good, obviously. I mean, you can only play it with the agent's leader, but it's a very, very good card. Uh, also, auto when this card is played, shuffle a total of two evil wizard cards and or agent destruction cards from your drop rate into your deck. So if you need to uh, need to cycle agents back, it's kind of a negative because I believe it's mandatory. If you have them, you have to shuffle them back. But the rut you're going through your deck, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. Garlic Jr., Immortal Agent of Destruction. Finally got a Garlic Jr. card. Uh, two drop yellow, counter attack, negate the attack, play this card. When this card is played, play up to one agent structure card, energy cost of two other than copies of this card from your deck with the skills negated for the turn, shuffle your deck. So just a way to spam out things. It only costs one if you have the agent or the ability on the field. Hatchiak, Vengeful Agent of Destruction. Active main for one, discard this card from your hand, play up to one Evil Wizard Bobbity card with energy cost of one from your deck or drop area. So this is really important because it essentially gives you six copies of that 
uh, Bobbity, which is really good because you want to lower the cost of all your cards, obviously. Kind of like wings in the slug deck. When this card is played, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and you cost four or less and warp it. Then place three battle cards from your opponent's drop right at the bottom of their deck and in the order. So kind of a counter uh, to Dredge Coup and other certain decks like that. As well as just getting rid of the battle card. You see this deck has a lot of ways to get rid of battle cards. Uh, the Agents of Destruction Strike Back. This is an extra card that gains Agent of Destruction in all areas, so you can grab it with all your Agent effects. Look at the top two cards of your deck. Add up two cards of Agent of Destruction among them to your hand, and then place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. And you can't activate copies of this card for the rest of the turn. If you added cards to the hand, add up to one card from your life to your hand. So this can be used to self-awaken. It also, if the top two cards of your deck, which probably at least 80 to 85 percent of your deck is going to be Agents of Destruction, especially since it can get itself, so a lot of times you're going to draw two cards off this, and very, very rarely are you not going to get anything. So that's all the agent cards. I'm probably going to make a deck profile for the agents pretty soon, just because it seems pretty cool, like it might be a fun deck. I'm not sure if it's good enough to win. It definitely kills battle cards, I'll give it that, but we'll have to see. The uh, the three drop or the Vegeta Unison might be good enough to kind of pull it all together. We'll have to see. It's definitely an interesting deck. Definitely spams a lot of things on the board for sure. Uh, Jiren, Legend of Universe 7, so this is a red unison card for 3. When your opponent plays a battle card or a unison card, you may choose that card. It gets negative 10k power for the turn, if you do negate the skill for the turn. So interesting, we actually have something that counters kind of unisons. One thing to note is if you lower a unison's power to 0, it doesn't kill the card outright. It just removes a marker and then resets the power. But this will be useful for unisons that actually like attack. Uh, that you want to stop from attacking you. Active main, this card gains double strike for the turn, so 20k double striker. Minus 3, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, it gets minus 25k power for the turn. Uh, or, sorry, active battle, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, it gets minus 25k for the turn. So this is interesting. One important negative to this, though, because normally this effect would be really good for activating on your opponent's turn, is the fact that you don't have a battle if they attack your unison. So if they attack your unison to get up below three counters, you can't use the effect anymore on their turn. So mostly you're going to be using it on your turn. Overall, not a bad unison. I don't know if it's like good enough, but it's definitely not terrible. Frost for the clan, another red unison. It is a blocker, 15k for two. If your leader card is a red freeze of BR card, look at the top four cards from the top of your deck. Add one mono red extra card among them to your hand, shuffle your deck. Active main, if your leader card is a red freeze of BR card, add up to two mono red extra cards from your drop area to your hand. So this is goes in the big Frieza that can't play any battle cards four or less, I think it is. I'll have to double check that. I think it's four or less. It's four or less or three or less. So it's all like extra cards. This is a very good card for that because it allows you to put an actual presence on the board and a lot of times you're not using the energy early anyways. Go along with that deck, you have Frieza Irate Emperor. It has active main for five if there are five or more bat red battle cards Red extra cards, excuse me, in your drop rate. Play this card from your hand. If your leader card is a red freezes army card, and there are two or more mono red extra cards, drop rate when this card is in the combo, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, gets minus 10k power for the turn. Another really good addition to that deck. Fortunately, probably not going to be good enough because that deck has a lot of other issues. Until it gets a super combo it can play, it's kind of awkward. So, yeah, kind of cool. I'll try it out because I actually really like that deck. I think it's a lot of fun but I don't think it's good enough to make the deck actually good. Uh, Planet Vegeta's Final Moments, another card for that deck. Uh, Counterattack, negate the attack. If leader is a red freeze of BR card, choose all of your opponent's leader cards and battle cards. They get minus 10k power for the turn. Obviously, this is very, very good. We'll have to see. I, I still don't know if it's actually good enough to make the deck a viable deck. The deck just is really awkward all around, but it's definitely a powerful card for it. And I'm definitely going to try to make the deck because I really, literally like to play that deck. Ah, uh, Janimba cards! I hate my life. I don't like this deck. Uh, I don't I don't like having to play against it. I don't like playing with it. It's just annoying. But here we have more Janimba cards. This is also an Agent of Destruction card, by the way, so you can play it in the Agent of Destruction deck. Uh, Janimba, we'll get Agent of Destruction. 15k, 2-drop blue. Uh, for 0, you and your opponent draw one card, and then your opponent places the top card of their deck in their drop area. Pretty simple. For 1, this card gains critical, and for minus 2, if your opponent has 15 or less cards in their deck, this card gains 15k power and triple strike for the turn. Now, I will say I like this idea for the Janimba deck, because it gives you another way to actually win the game. 
it actually makes your opponent have to think around, okay, can I just drop to one life if I can, can I take a Wicked Agent of Destruction? Like, it's kind of like the same uh, capacity that the old uh, playing like one or two Chompas in your deck would go, where like you're trying to bait your opponent into letting you actually kill them. So I like that aspect, and I like that it's not just like minus two, mill four cards off their opponent's deck, because it could have really easily been that, and I'm glad that it's not. Janimba, Raging Incarnation of Evil, 4-drop, Deflect Critical, when this card is played, activate this skill. At the start of your opponent's next turn, switch up to 3 of your Mono Blue Energy to Active Mode, then draw 1 card. I don't know, seems fine. Uh, it's kind of interesting that it's basically a 1-cost 20k Critical Deflect that uh, your opponent can't... That it's, it's almost more just for like actual just Mono Blue decks, rather than Janimba specifically. I, I think it's kind of just a worse Abuni, though. To be honest, I don't know. It's interesting. The fact that it on taps three is definitely kind of something unprecedented. Combo attack, Janimba. Active main burst two. Choose one evil incarnate card or demon card in your battle area, other than copies of this card. Put it his hand. Play this card from your hand and add up to two cards from your life to your hand. You can't play copies of this card for the turn. It's obviously good for Janimba because it self awakens you uh, if you need to get to your leaders like free negate or something like that. It's also interesting that it can be used. So you can play Janimba Raging Card Attack with it, bounce it for combo attack Janimba, and then uh, since it's up to two, like you can just keep doing that every turn. So that's a real interesting. These two could be a really interesting just actual blue deck. Something to think about, as well as that card being good in Janimba. Ah, uh, Gokul, Legendary Fusion Warrior. So this is interesting. It has to do with like Trunks Fusions. Uh, Go tanks fusions. There we go. Half of trunks. Uh, auto when this card is played, add up to green card with energy cost of six or less and union fusion skill from your deck to your hand. Then shuffle your deck. I'm sure there's something this is good in. I just I'm not 100 percent sure what it is yet. Then place this card from its owner's dropper. Choose one card in your hand with union fusion skill and reveal it. For each character that name required on the union skill, add up to one card with a matching character name and energy cost between three and seven from your deck to your hand. Then shuffle your deck. So basically you play it for one, you grab your Union Fusion, then you pay one green, reveal that Union Fusion to grab the two things that required for it. So basically in itself, it's a plus two that grabs your full Union Fusion combo, which is obviously going to be good in some capacity. Uh, Sun Goku can Trunks, Flawless Youth. If the looter card is a green Go Tanks card, you can place one card from your hand, life in your drop area, play this card from your hand for one green. Your leader card is a green Go Tanks card. Return this card to its owner's hand. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Add one green Go Tanks card or one green Unison card. Specify a cost of two from your hand and shuffle your deck. I don't think this card is going to be good enough simply because I don't think the green Go Tanks leader is good enough. Same with the Grim Reaper of Justice here. Um, deflect Dual Attack is a good combination. 25k uh, for Union Fusion for two with some Go Tanks Trunks. Leader card is a green Go Tanks card. That kind of sinks the card. Otherwise, this would actually be really interesting. When this card is played, draw two cards and choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it. When this card is removed from your battle area by your opponent's skill or KO'd, add one Sun Goten and one Trunks Youth card from your drop to your hand. So basically, it recurs your stuff. This whole engine is very interesting. Unfortunately, the fact that the, the green lead, the, the green Goten leader card, I just don't think is good enough. Is basically what it comes down to. King Vegeta Royal Pride. Now we're on to yellow with a yellow unison. And we have Great Ape Support, which is not something I expected at all. Uh, going into this. Uh, active main if your leader card is yellow, look it up in the top five cards of your deck, add up to one mono yellow great ape card among them, and shuffle your deck. And then for minus four, you can play two mono yellow great ape cards, different names, from your deck, and shuffle your deck. So this is interesting. You drop it on four, play two apes from your deck. Um, yeah, it seems like a cool effect, honestly. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything really wrong with this card at all. Uh, other than I don't know if apes are good enough, but uh, we have Great Bardock, Might of the Resistance. You need Critical Blocker. You can only play one. You can only play Mono Yellow Saiyan cards, which I honestly don't think was really needed on this. To be honest, if your leader card is yellow at the end of the battle area when this card is used to come from your hand, play this card. So I guess they were just too scared about people swarming with it. But I don't know. I mean, it's unique because you can't play it in multiples. And it's just like a critical blocker. It's not like it's something insane. I don't know. I don't think the Mono Saiyan thing was needed, but card's fine. Uh, it's not bad at all. Uh, full Moon. Uh, one cost yellow extra card. If you have a great ape card in play in your battle area, you can activate this card's skill from your hand without paying its energy cost. 
Choose up to one of your mono yellow cards, it gets plus 10k power for the battle. If it's your opponent's turn, choose up to one gray card for your battle and switch to Dacta Mode. This is really good in apes. I mean, it's a free 10k combo that uh, switches one of your eight blockers back to active mode. Seems really good. Uh, I don't know if uh, apes are good enough still, but uh, I, I like that Bandai is not afraid to add in old support that's just fun, basically, like just to play apes again or something like that. Uh, Sango Kajuder and Vegeta Jr. Saiyan Scions. Oh, we have more vanilla support, actually, which is interesting. So this is another unison. Choose this card in all of your skillless battle cards. It gets plus 5k power for the turn. Minus 1. Play up to 2 skillless battle cards under the cost of 1 from your deck or drop area. Then shuffle your deck if you look through it. Minus 2. Shuffle 2 skillless battle cards from your drop area into your deck. Draw 2 cards. Uh, it's interesting. It's again promoting it's promoting the one drop skillless deck, which I don't think is good enough. But and the other problem is like the Shenron Unison is better than this Unison and just the regular skillless deck. Sun Goku and Android 8 Bonds of Battle. This is two cost, 15k. This card and skillless cards in your battle area can be used as combo in rest mode. That's very interesting, by the way. It means that you, if you get like attacked for game, all those like rest mode battle cards you attacked with last turn can be used to combo with. If a leader card is a Black Sun Goku Childhood, when this card is played, add up to one card from your life to your hand, then play up to two skillless battle cards with 10k power from your deck or drop area. Shuffle your deck if you look through it. This is interesting. I don't know. It's so interesting. Like, is that good enough for the 1k power deck? I don't know. I don't know, man. I want these cards to be good so bad. I mean, you could play it with, like, a red deck with, like, the Jiren, the one-drop Jiren, that if you have a bunch of 10k power cards in your drop area, he, like, becomes ridiculous. Like, that, something like that could be a thing, maybe? Uh, but I, man, I want this to be good so bad. Uh, Hatchack, Mad with Hate. I love the name of that card. <laughs> mad with Hate. He's mad! Sorry. So, 9 drop, 30k, triple attack, EX evolve on a hatchback on she cost of 8. This card evolves into this card, switches to active mode. When your opponent activates a counter skill, they choose one card in their hands, add to their warp. It's a good card that I'll put in hatch. Uh, is it good enough to make hatch viable? Maybe. I don't think hatch is that bad right now, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, it just, like, super extends your plays, because now you can go uh, attack with your 8 drop hatch twice, because that's dual attack. Uh, Play this guy on top of it, bam, attack. Then you can play attack with a little card too, so you get like four or five attacks. Six with a unison, seven with your leader, so you get a bunch more attacks while still restricting your opponent, essentially. That being said, you have to be careful because it does remove your hatch jack level eight, eight cost negate that it normally had before. So definitely a card that we'll see play. The fact that it's a 5k combo for some reason is really interesting. Normally a card like this would be a 10k, but it'll probably go in in a couple copies for sure. Sadly, you can't put it back with Hatchack stuff either. That would be pretty nice. Max Power Kamehameha. This is one of the most interesting cards in the whole set, in my opinion, other than, I guess, the agent stuff. It's a one-cost black negate. Counterattack, negate the attack. You may send four cards from your drop area to your warp. If you do return this card from your drop area to your hand, you can't activate copies for the turn. So let's talk about what that means. That means any deck that mills cards, uh, black or otherwise, can play this card, and it's basically a negate every turn which is really good. Um, there was a while where I was actually playing, there's a black negate where you can discard two cards to grab it back after playing it. I was actually playing that in a couple decks uh, just so I would have like guaranteed negates. But yeah, this is really good. And uh, it's probably going to be the most impactful card in the set, sadly, which is, I mean, it's not super original. But yeah, it's basically an attack every single, or a negate, every single turn that you don't have to actually commit anything for. Assuming you can, you know, mill a bunch of cards and just have four to warp every time. Uh, it also has active main. Choose one of your opponent's battle cards. Energy cost greater than its current energy and send it to its owner's warp. So this is, you just play it in your main and you can warp a uh, card with energy cost uh, greater than its energy. So uh, things like the blocker from the new Sin Shenron deck, uh, any rivals, anything like that. Like this effect has been good in the past. So yeah, this card has like offensive and defensive capabilities. It has the you can negate and then later use it for its active main. Like this is a really good card, and uh, yeah, it's probably the best card in the set. So what do you guys think? Is this the best card in the set? Um, am I wrong? Is Vegeta the best card in the set? Because that's probably the other argument. Is the four cost Vegeta Unison? 
But uh, yeah, please, what are you excited for? What are you excited to play? I love what Bandai did with this set. I love that it just puts a bunch of more fun cards and takes them from like Oblivion tier to like maybe tier 3 so you can play them for fun on your locals, as well as putting in a couple actual powerful cards. So yeah, please like, subscribe, go out there, play some Super, and have some fun.